Hello friends, this video on principles of inheritance part 12 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now based on the monohybrid cross or based on this experiment performed by Mendel, he gave very important principles of inheritance and these were the basic principles of genetics. And what were those principles? They were law of dominance and law of segregation. So these were the two very important principles or laws, whatever you call them, uh, in the field of genetics. So these were the first laws you can say which could actually say that how the traits are being passed on from one generation to the next generation. So let us look at each of these laws one by one. So first we'll talk about law of dominance. So what is there in law of dominance? It says that in heterozygous organisms, only one out of the two alleles expresses itself and whichever expresses itself is called the dominant trait while the other which remains hidden is called the recessive trait. By now I think I don't really need to explain this law again because I already spoke about it. So wherever it is applicable only for heterozygous organisms because for homozygous there is no doubt you already know what will be the phenotype. Right? Or because in homozygous both the alleles are the same so obviously that allele will express itself. But in heterozygous, since you have two different alleles, so there is a doubt which will express. So the one who is dominant will express. So that was the law of dominance. So, so this is what was observed in the Mendel's first experiment, where when a tall plant, that is the homozygous tall, was crossed with the homozygous dwarf, it was seen that all the plants were tall. So why were all of them tall? That's because even though they were all heterozygous, that is they had one dominant allele and one other one recessive. But still, capital T was a dominant trait and small t was a recessive trait. That is why capital T got expressed and the plants were all tall in the F1 generation. So this was the law of dominance. So due to this law, the dwarf trait was hidden in the F1 generation. The next law was law of segregation. Segregation. Segregation means separation. So this law states that each alley retains its distinct identity even though they remain together. Now when you talk about any gene, whether you talk about this or you talk about this, now each alley has its own identity. They do not blend with each other. As This was as per Mendel's law. He said that if capital T is coming with small t that I mean, they always stay together right because as we know alleles do not exist singly an allelic pair forms the gene but that doesn't mean that capital T and small t will blend together and it will form a new thing like you might think it in this way also that a tall plant can mix with a tall trait can mix with a dwarf trait to form an intermediate trait but nothing like this was happening as per Mendel so as per Mendel there was no blending of the alleles even though two alleles were present together, but each of them were retaining their own identity. And that is why in the first generation, they exactly resembled one, one particular trait. Whereas in the F2 generation, they, they, they whatever was being produced, they resembled the uh, initial allele. Like if, if it was dwarf, the F dwarf which was being observed in F2 generation, that exactly resembled the parental dwarf. Right? So he said that the allele never blend with each other and they try to maintain their own identity. So it said that even though they remain together in an individual, they segregate only during gamete formation. So that was the law of segregation that alleles only segregate for gamete formation but otherwise they always remain together to form a gene pair but they always retain their own distinct identity. So alleles do not blend. So with this he explained the F2 generation. So now the F1 plants which were capital T, small t, capital T, small t, they were crossed together and it was found that the plants which were produced in the F2 generation, what happened to them? Most of them were tall but around 25% of them were dwarf. So that is what was being observed. So how did he explain this? He said that in a hybrid tall plant, so these type of plants which are heterozygous, the word hybrid is also used for heterozygous I and mean, they mean the same. So for these heterozygous plants, what happens? They have two alleles which are different from each other. One represents tall trait, the other represents dwarf trait. So they are together but then they have their own identity. So for in order to generate the F2 generation, 
gamete formation has to take place and during gamete formation T and T capital T and small t they segregate only during gamete formation but again after fusion they, they group with the other pair so basically they retain their identity so if capital T is for tall so they will always represent tall only so even if it is present with small t there is no blending between the alleles so this was what was told by uh, Mendel. So Mendel felt gave these two laws depending on I mean, based on his experiments on monohybrid cross. So with monohybrid cross he said that the law of dominance that is one trait will dominate over the other trait and the second was the law of segregation that is the alleles will segregate during gamete formation. However, so these were the first laws in the field of genetics as I mentioned before also. But later other scientists also came up and they also started doing a lot of research on genetics and then it was found that Mendel, I would not say that Mendel's law was incorrect but Mendel's law were not complete. There were scenarios where it was seen that there was blending between the alleles. So blending was found later. So there were also scenarios where it was seen that uh, the segregation which Mendel was talking about was correct but it was partially correct. So all those things which we will see as we go ahead. So this is what was given by Mendel with respect to monohybrid cross. Thank you. Please visit www.examclear.com to watch more videos, attempt a free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.